Today, um, I'm back to um, demonstrate some modeling pastes here, or acrylic mediums. Today is the Tri-Art Modeling Paste. Um, this is one that I use a lot, um, like a ton. I have another video in the library that um, is an example of how to apply it. And um, but this is what to do when it's dry. And it's the same as the gels. You can paint directly over top, fully opaque. If you want to, you can add um, uh, polymer mediums or water to, to thin them down so that you get more of a glaze effect. The trier, the molding pastes are bright white. So if you wanted to texture an entire canvas or a board or something, you can use them um, like a gesso and go over it in the in the entirety and and gesso it. You can make very uh, subtle textures, or you can also um, make really big peaks. One of the nice things about trier is that it um, it shrinks a little bit, but it doesn't crack. It doesn't tend to crack. Um, ignore this board. This is really, really cheap. Just mount board. Uh, I didn't want to spend a ton of money just to do these tests. So that's why you've got all this absorby kind of yick here. It's not a nice surface at all. Um, yeah, so Trier doesn't... It shrinks a little, but it doesn't crack like others, namely Liquitex. And I'm sorry to call Liquitex out on this, but their molding paste is really, really heavy. It's very chalky, um, and it cracks a ton, like just a ton. Um, I've done uh, like an 18 by 24 molding paste with it, and the canvas ended up weighing like, I don't know, eight pounds just with all of this, this molding paste that was on it. Um, and it cracked like mad. It was terrible. It felt really like um, uh, like a drywall compound. It's really what it felt like, which was kind of not cool. By the way, I'm using toilet paper. This is not your best option. You should probably have a damp rag. But anyway, nice, right? And you can layer and glaze. I love molding paste. I love acrylics. I love watercolor. Okay. Um... Yeah, so Tri Art's good. Uh, the Golden Molding Paste is really good. Uh, Liquitex, I'm not a big fan of. I'm sorry, but I'm not. Um, okay. You also should be aware of light molding pastes. Um, they are a different uh, being than this. They are absorbent, so your glaze wouldn't do this. It would absorb in and act more like a stain. Okay, so molding paste has a lot of whiting in it. This is very white, and it's going to pastelize most of your colors. Okay, you may like that. You may not. See, as I mix this in, if I blend it, blend it, blend it completely, oh, look, pastel blue. Mm. Some people like that. I think it's yucky. Uh but you can just float the color in as well. If you want to have really abstract textures or like it's really beautiful. You can do a lot of different stuff with it. Anyway, this will dry completely white. Um, and that's why, I mean, molding paste is not the greatest thing to go over top because you're basically just putting white globs on top. I'm sure someone else has good ideas about how to make that work. And that's all I'm doing here is providing you with demonstrations so that you guys can figure out for yourself how it'll work. That's the idea. So you see what it does, and then you're like, oh, I can use that for X, Y, or Z. Okay, so that's, that's molding paste, and that's how molding paste acts. Once again, this is going to be on the blog, um, peeling-onions.com or lesliedavidson.com. Um, there should be a link underneath this video. Uh, I'll have a scan of all of these um, available on the blog. Some of them may be in the library, which you need to sign up for the mailing list to get into. But there's a lot of really cool stuff in the library that's free. A lot of demos, um, uh, downloads, the free goodies. Anyway, check that out. Um, I'll be back with more.
momentarily.